Here you see a very rare specimen from the year 1972. It's an original Telefunken Hi-Fi stereo catalog, almost unused. Look at all the products that existed back then. Hans-Jürgen Gessner is actually an electronics wholesaler. Now he's also a partner in Telefunken, one of 50 worldwide. The name Telefunken was what first attracted him to the venture. And the latest consumer survey shows he's on the same wavelength as stereo equipment customers in general, who are once again going for well-known brands. We're riding the trend and using the brand name for new products, reviving Telefunken and doing it with hi-fi components designed and engineered in Germany. Gessner's warehouse near Saarbrücken Famous brands from around the world are distributed from here, but this roll call of labels is just the beginning. The Telefunken project has absolute priority, and these days Gessner is cultivating predominantly Telefunken products. That's risky, but he thinks Telefunken is a winner. Really fabulous design, great sound quality. You can hang it on the wall, display it at home. It's very decorative, and has an extremely good sound. Or take this remote control. Here too, the way a product looks is important. And how a remote control feels in your hand. This isn't plastic, it's not cheap. It's high quality aluminium. A change of scene, Frankfurt. This is where the reanimator of the once defunct brand is based. Hemje Klein is well known in the German business world. After stints on the executive board of Deutsche Bahn and Lufthansa, he's now at Telefunken. Klein's headquarters look almost deserted. With Berlin's International Consumer and Electronics Trade Fair, the IFA, coming up, his 15 employees are with partners in Turkey and Asia, where the products developed in Germany are produced. The legacy of a German global brand. Klein has delved deep into Telefunken's history. Founded in Berlin in 1903, it soon became a company that significantly advanced wireless communication worldwide, right up to radio control for missiles. Then, in the 1980s, Telefunken ran out of steam. When you look at it nowadays, you notice they made a few decisive entrepreneurial mistakes. They developed too much themselves and reacted too late to the global market. At the time, the Sonys of the world, which were extremely aggressive, finished them off. They just couldn't compete anymore in terms of price and conditions. Klein wants to avoid such mistakes, and he's considered a shrewd businessman. About three years ago, he bought the rights to the brand name from Daimler for 30 million euros. <laughs> His general manager is reporting to him on the current situation. He shows Klein one of their products, which will be ready in time for the Berlin Trade Fair, a high-definition multimedia player. Some of the Telefunken partners are small engineering laboratories. They combine know-how and design. We ourselves are a really small team with perhaps 20 people. But if you consider the partners in our alliance, which are all licensed and work exclusively with us as equals on Telefunken, we have 3,000 employees. It's just a question of where you put your interface, and I think that in doing this we contribute a great deal to a market development with very stable prices and employee structures. Back in Saarland, Telefunken partner Hans-Jürgen Gessner is convinced that the venerable brand will bring back more jobs to Germany, especially at the high end of the market. We'll be showing our products in Berlin. Professional audio and hi-fi products will be introduced and brought onto the market this year with the Made in Germany seal. Our aim is to gradually reintroduce the development and manufacture and marketing of our high-quality products to Germany. Telefunken's rebirth as a global brand. Next, the company plans to couple the sound quality produced by vacuum tube technology with digital quality. After all, reinventing the company itself is a step towards reviving the best of the past.